Over a year ago, I began a journey. A journey to find a game that best realized my childhood dream of becoming Spider-Man. In the time since this hunt began, we've found more and more experiences that fit the bill, but we're yet to name a definitive winner. We've spent months gathering games, and now is finally the time to decide. Join me as we finish this hunt and find the game. In this final leg of the hunts, we will cover six new games and demos, then rank them alongside all previous contenders to find the best. Resist, Project Demigod, and Jupiter Grey. The final fight is in this contest of champions. Which game will rise to the top and seize the crown? This is the hunt. For the best Spider-Man VR game. If you're looking for VR web swinging, I recommend Resist VR. Oh, you like Swarm? Try Resist. You have to try Resist on Oculus. Have you ever tried Resist? Please Don't forget try about Resist. Resist! I have been resisting the urge to scream. <laughs> I received so many comments telling me to check out Resist, it kind of began to get on my nerves, similar to what happened with the Boneworks mod in the last episode. But where those comments led me to never want to touch the mod at all, the unanimous insistence that I gave Resist a try actually drew me closer to it. It was around January that I took my first look into the game. I recall seeing BMS video on it where he called it Spider-Man plus Infamous. I noticed in the thumbnail that there were guns, and having just come off the narcotic that is Swarm, I knew swinging and shooting was a match made in heaven. Some months later, I visited the game in the Quest Store. As the trailer played, its innate quality became apparent. Adding to that was the fact that Resist seemed to present something that no other Spider-Man VR game had before. A story. So I purchased the game. Then sat on it for about a month. I don't know why I'm like this either, I've been trying to figure it out for years. Resist is an open world adventure taking place in Concord, a dystopian city where a corporation run by a narcissist controls everything. And get this, the metaverse is a thing. How did they get away with this? I enjoyed the story a lot more than I thought I would. The tone is well balanced with serious moments and, uh, this. Crypto, but I don't think I'd last long as <laughs> and the excellent voice acting really helps sell the narrative. I got so invested in the story that when the game decided to pad its runtime by forcing me to do open world activities, I was actually frustrated I couldn't get on with it. A Spider-Man VR game has never done that before. Now, when it comes to swinging, there's something lurking, hiding in the shadows, a feeling that I've been here before, and that's because I have. The memory arose, like a crocodile rises above water. Swing a man. That is correct. This game's swinging mechanics have a shocking amount in common with Swing a Man, the game I coined the worst Spider Man VR game. Thankfully, Resist is not Swing a Man, and so does those mechanics a lot better. Resist Swinging abides by what I've come to call the golden standard for VR swinging. The standard consists of pendulum physics by default, allowing your swings to arc. Then, upon an input, the webs can be retracted like a grapple. As we discovered in the last episode, this standard is most accurate to Spider-Man, since we constantly see him retract his webs like this. The standard is put on display masterfully here. My swings were smooth and their arcs deep. The grapples complemented them by allowing me to speed myself up and stop myself from hitting the ground. The progression system offers extra abilities too, like the jetpack and pseudo spider sense slow motion. They all combine to make an exciting best in class swinging system. This is what all Spider Man VR games should aim to replicate. There are lots of customization settings that affect the swinging too, which is where you'll start to notice the Swinger Man similarities. Under the default settings, you have this trajectory line in front of you that is controlled by rotating your wrists. This is primarily used for sharp turns around corners. Smooth turning will rotate you along with the lines so that you can manage the direction you're moving in mid-air. 
I changed these settings so that I turned my head instead of my wrist, and so smooth turning only moves the trajectory line. I found this to be a lot better in room scale, and had basically no issues going forward. The only one I did have is when I tried to scale buildings. Since resist doesn't have wall crawling, there is a lock on grapple instead. Sometimes it would work, and other times it wouldn't. But that's a minor bump in the road compared to the other nuggets of greatness resist is packed with. Should you want to forego swinging entirely, the super jump ability is ridiculous. It's so overpowered you could probably use it as your only method of movement across Concord. The city isn't a boring place to be either. There are dozens of activities dotted around, many of which test your swinging skills. My favourites were these interaction puzzles, which I love despite not fully understanding. Yeah, I am doing VCAL, how'd you know? And the guns? They're basic, but pretty cool. The story mode has a variety of enemies for you to face, with the difficulty being balanced pretty well. With that and the swinging, Resist basically becomes Swarm on steroids. Where this concoction shined the most was in the final battle, where I faced this big crystal thing in the metaverse. It was so intense ducking between buildings, keeping myself off the ground, all the while trying to get hits in with my pistols and shotguns. The experience I had playing Resist was certainly worth the hype. The story, a first in this genre, was compelling and entertaining. The swinging felt perfected, and the combat, even though not Spider-Man combat, was perfectly balanced between difficulty and spectacle. Resist is putting up one hell of a fight. Tech demos have always been a part of this hunt. You could call the WebVR game 1, and the Silkworm 2. These demos tend to be the ones that bring new mechanics to the fray, where full games refine existing ones. So in this video, we'll be reviewing three new tech demos and ranking them alongside all others for the title of the best Spider-Man VR tech demo. Our first challenger is WebGuy VR. Now I do wonder who that could be referring to. Is what Marvel's lawyers will say should they ever see this. What do you mean? Upon first discovering the demo, my mind couldn't help but shoot to those terrible knockoff mobile games that attempt to skirt their Spider-Man ties. So when I opened SideQuest to check it out, my hopes weren't very high. And then I saw the guy in the video do a backflip. We all know that Spider-Man does flippy tricks and stuff, it's a staple of the character. But because of these stupid, dumb pieces of cartilage, flips aren't in a lot of Spider-Man VR games for the simple reason that doing them makes you lose your lunch. Funnily enough, Swinger Man also had flipping mechanics, but like everything else in that game, they sucked. Since the bar isn't that high, it isn't surprising that Web Guy flies high above it, but I think it could fly even higher. Oh god. What already soars is the swinging. The golden standard is in place with pendulum and grapple physics, and you've even got a full body, which helps with immersion. The jump button kind of sucked though, it wasn't very strong. After all of that, I tried out the flipping by pressing the A button. See, the problem with Web Guy's flips aren't the flips themselves, it's the way the game handles the direction you actually flip in. To help visualize the problem, picture this. There's a circle around your feet, and in the direction you're facing, there's an arrow. This is the way you'll flip upon hitting the button. When you smooth turn, the arrow follows the direction you're facing, and when you physically turn, it stays put. This is a problem for two reasons. One, if you're playing stationary, you're screwed. And two, in room scale, you lose track of which way you're facing very quickly. In my experience, I was never able to do a backflip whenever I wanted. Instead, I'd have to land, find which direction forward was, smooth turn back around towards the edge of the building, then jump off. Here's how I would fix this. Buff the weak jump button so that you fly up a lot higher, have the flip button lock your movement, then have the left thumbstick control the direction of the flip. This means the direction you push the stick in is the direction you'll flip. Sorry past me, gotta interrupt you there because WebGuy has actually received an update since I wrote this video, and good news, flipping has now been moved to the right thumbstick. It works perfectly if you only smooth turn, but if you physically turn it puts the flip direction all out of whack. If you've tried it, you probably know what I mean, so the solution I just posed still stands. That's all from me, I'll let you get back to the video now. This is just one solution I came up with after playing for an hour or so. I'm sure WebGuy's developer can come up with something that will work even better. But as it is, WebGuy brings something awesome to the Spider-Man VR genre. Okay, so I have a bit of a confession to make. I originally planned for this segment to be talking about another game with Spider-Man combat, the name of which I'll spare mentioning. To be totally honest, I really wanted to like it, but I just couldn't. What game is he talking about? I am really curious. I have played countless games for this series. 
Most of them have made it into the videos, but I'd be lying if I said all of them did. I'm not going to beat around the bush, since you probably have already figured it out, but the game I didn't review in part 2, the one I had nothing but negative things to say about, was Project Demigod. Now before you sound off in the comments, which I'm sure you're going to do anyway, I want to set some things straight, so let's jump back to 2021. When I first met the game, it was called Project Meta, and yes, it was changed for the reason you're thinking. At that point, it was a simple demo exclusive to PC VR. I didn't doubt that it could take the best game title, since it was another simple demo that had done that, but upon trying it, I was disappointed. Project Meta's webs felt terrible, with my swings not even having arcs to them. The combat was rife with jank as well. I couldn't find a single thing I liked about the game, so I ended up not including it in the video. Now, back to 2022. Since you obviously weren't aware it was the game I didn't like, Project Demigod was continually name-dropped in the comments. By the time production on this video started, I hadn't played the game in around 8 months, so I figured that it would have changed. Considering it was now a renamed, paid App Lab game, I definitely had that expectation. After receiving another 30% off coupon because Meta's stock had just tanked for the third time that week, I purchased and downloaded the game. So, was it better? Project Demigod and Superfly, the current best game, share similar gameplay. Most blatantly, it and Demigod both contain power sets, granting you the powers of multiple heroes. These powers can then be taken to Millennium City, the Apartment Complex, the Gladiator Arena, or my personal favourite, the Training Grounds. There is one thing that sets this level apart from the others, but we'll touch on that later. In all honesty, my first impressions of Project Demigod weren't all that different from that of Project Meta. I still didn't really like the game. This whole situation might remind you of what happened in Episode 1 with the Unbreakable Gumball, where I didn't initially enjoy it. But after giving it more time and thought, I came to really like it. Thankfully, the same thing has come to pass with Project Demigod, and now I think it might have the best Spider-Man VR combat... ever. One of the seven power sets on offer are, obviously, Spider-Man powers. I really appreciated how there's an in-game menu explaining how to use the powers too. You have web lines to sling, web shots to shoot, and walls to crawl. I found the crawling to work, but not be particularly compelling. The swinging was a mixed bag too. The first time I tried it, my swings still didn't have an arc to them. It was like the web was getting longer as I flung through the air. It sucked. No way around that. I had a look around in the settings and found this option that changed the behaviour of the webs. When turned on, the webs act a lot like the webs in the Boneworks mod, like grapples. I turned the setting off and instantly the swinging became a lot better. Definitely not perfect, but passable nonetheless. The absence of the golden standard is definitely felt. Now, I don't doubt you'll spend most of your time in Project Demigod punching on with enemies. Can't blame you, turns out violence is pretty fun. Demigod does violence so well that it blows the standard set by the Boneworks Spider-Man mod out of the water. Enemies can be summoned into the world via this menu with a gallery of foes to face, including lots of humanoids and velociraptors. I mean, I, I, I guess this works. Fighting against these agents in particular reminded me a lot of Mr. Negative's minions from Spider-Man PS4. And for how you go about putting them down, you have a bevy of options. With the physics in place, webs are multi-purpose. Use them to pull enemies off their feet or hang them from walls. Best of all, you can do the jump takedown thing I love from the Boneworks mod, and it's better than ever here. Web shots are as useful as they've ever been as well. Used both offensively and defensively, they make for a versatile addition. But as archaic as it sounds, your main weapons are still your fists. However boring you might think that'd be, Project Demigod has some of the best hand-to-hand -hand combat I've ever played in VR. A lot of that praise comes down to how the enemies actually attack you, since a lot of their strikes leave them open to parries. These monks, for example, use kicks a lot, so I would catch their leg mid-air and then hoist them forward, making them fall to the ground. This adds so much depth beyond timing your punches right. And that's just one thing you could do too. Different attacks and parries work better against different enemies, so there's always something new to try. The presence of slow-mo spider sense makes these counters viable as well, and any other borderline impossible thing you want to try is totally feasible since you have Spider-Man's reaction time. But even with that, there's still one more thing. You remember how I said the training grounds have something that set them apart from the other maps? Well, that thing is this. Yep. Destructible environments. 
For some reason, the other maps in the game don't employ these destructible materials. It's probably for performance, but using them in combat adds so much gravitas to the power fantasy that it's hard to go without them. I just wish that after destroying a wall, I could pick up the fragments and use them like a flail, like the heavy attacks in Spider-Man Edge of Time. That would be just the cherry on top. Looking back on it, Project Demigod has had one hell of a character arc. Going from a game I didn't like, to a game I still didn't like, to a game that now has a fighting chance at claiming the title. Of all the games in this video, Demigod will be the one I come back to and play the most. And that puts it in pretty good stead for the final ranking. There's been an issue afflicting dozens of Spider-Man VR games, and it concerns one of Spider-Man's key abilities. Throughout my time reviewing these games, wall crawling has been a spot where many games lose face. It tends to be a slow, neck pain inducing and impractical addition to the power set. Some games will include it in its subpar, others do away with it for something else. But then there's the few games that attempt to innovate. One of those is Far From Home VR with its wall running. But that game has Far From Home VR's controls, so any progress is null and void. Point is, we are in desperate need of innovation in the wall crawling field, and I think these next two demos offer just that. Down the road of searching for demos, I made a pit stop at a seemingly forgotten itch.io page for something called Spiderini. The most recent comments on the page dated back to February, but they all praised the demo for one reason or another. I know there's some real tough competition in the field, but I think Spiderini is the best physics-based experience in this series, and not just out of the tech demos. The swinging has the golden standard and invokes a strange sensation. I could feel the weight my virtual body had. Of course, this weightiness is one of the main advantages of a physics system, but it felt substantially better here. I was taken aback by just how effortless the wall crawling felt. It was as fluid as the swinging and had unparalleled controls because of one tiny change. To wall crawl in other games, let's use the spider layer as an example, you place your hand on the wall, press trigger, and drag yourself up. Repeat that until you reach the top and you're done. Simple, right? Mostly. If you're not 100% on the ball, you might misplace your hand and not crawl up, totally ruining the flow and making the whole thing more laborious. What Spiderini does is so obnoxiously simple that I'm surprised no other game has done it so far. Holding the trigger makes your hand sticky, for lack of a better term. You can then move your hand to the wall where it will stick and you can climb up. It probably sounds like a nothing burger of a change, but it makes such a big difference in gameplay. Doesn't fix my neck though. I think I found Spider-Man's next big villain, it's Arthritis. It's a massive shame that Spider-Eenie seems to be dead in the water. Despite being a simple demo, the physics exceed that of full games, and the changes made to wall crawling can't be found anywhere else. The HIO page is still up, so I suppose we can hope that one day the project will be revived. If there's one genre I have slept on for years, it's platforming games. Over the course of my life, I've only ever played maybe 4 or 5, two of which were console ports of Spider-Man games to the DS. My disinterest in them translated to the virtual world too. Every time I would see one on the store, I would simply dismiss it as something I wouldn't be interested in. So when I saw Jupiter Grad on the Quest store for the first time and saw level-based platforming, I never gave the game another thought again. I eventually reconsidered in the making of this video, and it led me to discover something I loved. Remember how I said Swarm was my favourite VR game in the last episode? Well, that was short-lived, since Jupiter Grad has now pried that accolade directly from its hands. Over the course of playing it, it even began to remind me of my favourite game ever. Which just so happens to be a platformer. Wow, I am a massive liar. So it turns out I was completely wrong about what Jupiter Grad actually is, since the level-based gameplay I got a glimpse of on the store is only a chunk of the whole thing. The others are the Free Room Gymnasium and the place I spent most of my time, the Story Mode. After literally being shown the ropes in the tutorial, it became apparent how flawless Jupiter Grad swinging feels. The Cosmo Sticks have the golden standard, this time with the grapples being on the thumbstick. The momentum and control I had while using them was unrivaled. It provided the thrill of speed without sacrificing intuitive control in such a way that made the chaos of frictionless movement feel calculated and crafted. While progressing the campaign, I came to love one thing about Jupiter Grad's design. The fact that it is a platformer, and one focused solely on movement at that. There were no enemies to defeat, pickups to collect, or audio logs I didn't care about. 
It was just me, my Cosmo sticks, and whatever lay between them and my destination. Boiling pipes, slicing fans, virulent flamethrowers, all overcome through movement. I appreciate the restraints so much, because it would have been so easy just to throw in some random enemies to add another layer to gameplay. What Game Dust did was fully believe in their movement mechanics and mold the entire game around them. That focus on a central mechanic combined with some funny similarities called my favourite game to mind. Portal. Now, hear me out, because it might be difficult to see the resemblance. GLaDOS isn't a Marxist after all. I haven't written my video essay yet. Jupitergrad's story mode has you navigate a desolate facility through the use of a new and innovative technology. As you travel through this place that seems to be designed to kill you, you're accompanied by a sarcastic AI who acknowledges that she's an AI, and Spider-Man, funnily enough. Your efforts are to create Peck Hole, a new fuel source General Varnikov wants you to make, and definitely not because he wants to kill everyone with it. Does this sound at all familiar? The moment the connection really clicked for me was outside the Peck Hole synthesis chamber, where I heard this piece from the game's fantastic soundtrack. Like, this this game has Portal's tone. It really does feel like Portal, because you got, like, the sarcastic sort of robot voice in your head, but then you got just ethereal, alien music like this, and, oh, it's just such a good combination. And just like Portal, the game is the ideal length. It doesn't overstay its welcome, you can beat the whole story in less than an hour. New obstacles are introduced at a steady pace, and although some sections can get annoying, the moments of frustration are effortlessly cancelled out in the rush of the flow state. Even if the campaign isn't for you, Jupiter Grad's other two modes probably will be. Gymnasium offers a free-swinging environment that can be rejigged at your leisure. Here is the place where you can refine your technique and master the swinging. Then take it to the time attack mode and chip away at your scores. And when you're done, play some tunes on the dictator keyboard. Pattern pending. Great. What makes Jupiter Grad special is this. Instead of taking a gamble and trying to emulate all of Spider-Man's abilities, it takes one and does it to abject mastery. Extra modes, brilliant pacing, and a high skill ceiling elevate this game above others. And even though it comparatively lacks Spider-Man abilities, what content there is is done so well that it's going to earn a high spot in the rankings. One afternoon as the sun died. I received a message. It was from a member of my Discord server who has since deleted their account. Hey, not sure if you remember, but a while back I posted on your server about a VR Spider-Man game I'm working on, and I recently uploaded it to Steam. It's not on the store yet, but you can download it if you have a key. As they described the key features, I discerned among the rest a mention of a wall running ability. Was this another possible solution to the wall crawling problem? The viewer provided me with a Steam key to the demo, so I punched it in and played. Now, being a tech demo, Under the Mask is obviously limited. Not unlike much of its competition, there are no proper textures to be found besides these hand models which are admittedly pretty cool looking. Even though not possessing the golden standard, the swinging felt pretty good. The momentum was balanced, and I could control my trajectory fairly well. There were two things that stood out to me though. Two things that made me have revelations about the Spider-Man VR genre as a whole. First off, web crosshairs are amazing and should be in every game. There aren't many games that don't have them, but when you play a game that doesn't, it becomes very noticeable. And secondly, web travel time is a good thing, but it needs to be done right. When the travel time isn't egregious, it adds an extra degree of skill to swinging that makes landing shots feel amazing. Holy shit, I actually landed that. Let's go. However, it can be overdone, most notably in the Silkworm, where it makes the swinging annoying, not more rewarding. But of course, the wall running feature. It is good, but not devoid of difficulties. In order to initiate a run, you have to hit the wall at a certain angle. Once you're on, you can move on it freely or jump off with extra momentum. This plays so much better than Far From Home VR's take on the idea, which feels a lot more binary. You either move up, down, left or right, unlike Under the Mask diagonal movement. Actually getting onto the wall is where it feels finicky. As said, the angle you need to hit the wall at is very precise. I let the developer know of this, and they said fixing it was in the pipeline. I also suggested that your view could be shifted while on the wall as if you were standing upright. Even if it has problems, Under the Mask does web travel time right, and even poses a solution to the wall crawling problem. I would say I'm excited to see where it goes, but given that I was only given access to the game through a private key and the developer has since deleted their account, it seems like Under the Mask might be gone. Hold on, I've got another update for you. 
While working on this video, I managed to get back in touch with the game's developer. The project isn't actually dead, it's just on hiatus at the moment. Also, it turns out the game was uploaded to Game Jolt, so if you have a VR-ready PC, you can play it there. Okay, yeah, that, that's all I've got. Anyone can wear the mask. You could wear the mask. There we are. We have our final contenders for the titles of the best Spider-Man VR tech demo and Spider-Man VR game. But before we get into the final rankings, we must discuss what has become of the other games in the series since they were covered. For the sake of fairness, beginning with a tragedy, it is with a heavy heart that I tell you that Spider-Man Far From Home VR has been murdered. Yeah, basically the publishing license just expired and they decided not to renew it for some reason, which kind of sucks because it was a lot of people's first Spider-Man VR game, including mine. Even more depressingly, the Unbreakable Gumball seems to be totally broken, at least on Steam. I managed to get the itch.io version working on Quest 1, since the devs have said there isn't Quest 2 support. After replaying it, I can see why I thought it was the best game back then, but compared to what I played now, it falls short. A developer actually contacted me a month or so before Part 2 came out with a dev branch of the game, which has added a lot of stuff, including flat screen compatibility, but still no working VR support. Believe it or not, Swingerman has actually had a tiny, very very tiny, redemption arc. The controls still suck and it still isn't fun, but I actually managed to get it running on my headset again. If you want to see me play it again, check out that video. The Spider Lair has seen constant support with new suits, including the TASM 2 suit, let's go, time of day settings, web customizations, swinging physics tweaks, and a slew of other things. The people behind it are working on a new experience too, called the Ultimate Spider Lair. It claims to be the greatest Spider Man VR experience, which I guess I'll be the judge of. Current title holder Superfly is now on Quest and is more fun than ever. The full release adds new bosses and modes, and the swinging in gadgets still hold up. If you're looking for a superhero VR game that isn't just Spider-Man, this is probably your best bet. Swarm still rocks, and it even has multiplayer now. The hub world gives you a new, freer context to experience the awesome swinging in. And finally, the Silkworm still exists, but it hasn't been updated. The Spider-Man web VR game also still exists. Could not get it to run on my microwave though. Now that we're up to speed, we're finally ready to rank every single tech demo and game to find the best, starting with the tech demos. You better be ready. It's all been leading to this. In last place, we have the Spider-Man Web VR game. There's no way to sugarcoat this. The controls suck, the physics feel nothing like Spider-Man, and the vibe the game gives off inspires dread for some reason. In fourth place, the Silkworm. Despite its proximity to last place, I don't hate this game. The overdone web travel time just makes it a bit annoying to play, but it looks like crap. Like, like, like actual crap. In third, Under the Mask. In contrast to the Silkworm, the web travel time here makes the already good swinging more gratifying, and the wall running, if cleaned up, would be an interesting alternative to wall crawling. In second place is Web Guy. Web Guy's flipping mechanic is so goddamn cool that it shoots it directly up to second place. If the flipping mechanic is refined, it would make for a feature every single Spider-Man VR game needs. The swinging succeeds as well, with the golden standard in place. Finally, the best Spider-Man VR tech demo is Spiderini. This demo is a masterclass in physics-based swinging. My swing's arcs are weighty and correct feeling, with the golden standard shining brighter than ever. On top, a simple change to wall crawling makes it feel as fluid as the swinging and makes me actually want to use it. Well done to Spiderini. It's sad to think that this project isn't being worked on anymore, so we'll never see it become a full game, but even still, the mechanics on show here are second to none. If you want physics-based swinging, Spiderini's your game. We have nine games to rank today. They will each be judged according to the quality of their swinging and combat. That which is most formidable at both will bear the crown. Enough chatter. Let's finish the hunt. In last place is Swingerman. I mean, I mean, come on, we were all expecting this, right? Even though the insane performance issues have been ironed out, the swinging is still wonky as hell, none of Spider-Man's other abilities are on display, and despite being paid, this thing barely resembles a game. A void? like the plague. In an earth-shattering fall from grace, once title holder the Unbreakable Gumball plummets to eighth. Upon replaying the game, which itself came with problems, 
Gumball just barely avoids last with the golden standard, a cool art style, and web shots. But even so, with unresponsive filling controls and comparatively bare-bones combat, Gumball loses the advantage it had in the early days of the hunt. Coming in 7th is Far From Home VR. Although not being truly accurate to the character, Far From Home VR has some decently fun movement despite its war crime controls. The wall running, if jank, saves you neck pain, and it even has limited combat in the drone missions. The city has a few things to do too, like collecting alternate suits. From here on out is where the games get pretty good. Coming in at 6 is Swarm. With unique combat, an American household worth of guns, and hyper boss battles, Swarm isn't afraid of doing something new with the Spider-Man experience. The swinging feels great inside and outside enclosed arenas, and the multiplayer mode is a rare sight in this genre. In fifth comes my new favourite VR game, Jupitergrad. This game takes the swinging sensation and hones it with the golden standard and great controls, then makes an entire campaign around it to test your skill. The feeling of being in the game's flow state, under those muscle memory-like instincts, is absolutely breathless. Because the swinging is so well done and is applied in such a great way, the absence of other Spider-Man mechanics does not matter. At fourth, the Spider-Lair. Like the previous game, the Spider-Lair doesn't have combat, but supplements it with plenty of other terrific features. Dozens of suits to wear, go-karts to drive, walls to paint, web customization, time of day and weather options, multiplayer... The changes to swinging have made it feel better than ever as well. The Spider Lair is the definition of a make your own fun experience, and there's plenty of fun to be found. Superfly lands in third. This new to Quest game is another of the make your own fun variety, this time giving you powers and a city to run amok in. Face Avengers level threats, take part in street skirmishes, or simply be the menace you're made out to be. And if you're bored of that, switch to Doc Ock or Electro powers. In terms of sheer variety, Superfly takes the cake. Resist and Project Demigod, the final two challenges. They've done well to come this far, but only one can win. And so, my decree is this. The best Spider-Man VR game is Project Demigod. This was a very difficult decision to make. Here's the thing. Resist and Demigod have a feature they each do extremely well respectively. Resist undoubtedly has the best swinging out of every other game. The game takes the iconic Spider-Man movement and translates it with no caveats. But then there's the problem of the combat. It's nothing like Spider-Man, he doesn't use guns. That's not a knock against Resist, it's its own thing after all. It just means calling it the best Spider-Man VR game would be unfair since it lacks a key need of the title. Then we have our victor, Project Demigod. Demigod has the best replication of Spider-Man's fighting style that we have ever seen in VR. However, I gave Demigod swinging a fair bit of flack. But even so, Demigod wins for a single reason. The game is still in development. Resist is finished. The game we have now is the game we will always have. But that doesn't apply to Demigod. The game is probably being worked on as we speak, and since the combat is already perfect, it's likely the swinging will be one day too. If the golden standard was implemented, the physics tidied, and some changes made to wall crawling, I know for a fact that Demigod would be the closest I will ever come to being Spider-Man. And with that, I can finally say with absolute certainty that the title of the best Spider-Man VR game definitively, deservedly, goes to Project Demigod. If you can do that, you are Spider-Man. We began this series with a dream, to become the hero we all wish we could be. And now, after the trials and tribulations of this hunt, we're closer to that dream than ever before. we found a game that gives us Spider-Man's power, a game that allows us to fly through the air as he does. Project Demigod is, without a doubt, the experience my younger self dreamed of one day attaining. But that kid, in that unfitting, goofy-looking costume, had another passion. 
And however cliche it might sound, that passion was doing what I am right now. Hi, where from? For as long as I've loved Spider-Man, I've been making videos. From badly recorded Let's Plays to stupid short films to loosely told Lego stories, I have always made videos, and then one day, in October 2021, somebody watched. Then another, and another, until something I had made had been seen over a million times. Then they kept coming back, kept listening, and now we're here saying goodbye to a years long journey. But something else I've noticed is just how much I've changed as a person over the past year. This channel actually... I began this hunt an incredibly shy and closed off person. I could barely look people in the eye when I spoke to them. I would mute my mic in public game lobbies. But nowadays, I barely recognize that person. I'm by no means a social butterfly, but I've changed. And that's because of you. You have all given me a place to be me. And more importantly, to be heard. So don't ever underestimate the value of time, attention, listening. These are the real powers that we all have. Take them into the world and do everything you can with them. Because you have the power to change yourself, other people, anything. And if there's one thing that we all know for certain, it's that with great power, there must also come great responsibility. Thank you, bye-bye.